Um, we're doing a more of a overview of, of different things that we've um, used Argos and eVision products for at Sanford University. Um, Sanford's a beautiful campus in um, Birmingham, Alabama, in the rolling hills there. And um, we have about 5,600 students um, and 10 analysts in the IT department, and we're supporting Banner, um, the eVision products, and um, some various third-party software that we also use. Um, in our history, um, we went to Banner in 2005, and um, we also implemented Argos in 2005, so we're kind of antique Argos programmers. <laughs> Been on it a while. Um, but in, in that time, um, we've tried to uh, take, as they implemented new features, we've tried to implement them and uh, use them at our university. Um, we uh, started using their OLAP in 2008, and um, we use it for the schedule. We use it intensively to burst our emails, to send out, and um, the dashboards have been heavily used. Um, recently, we went live on Better 9 last year, and um, we're using the uh, eVision's uh, data warehouse to monitor who's using um, Argos and how it's been used and um, trying to, uh, was, we've been on the system so long, we're trying to weed out some things that aren't being used anymore. And um, we're using the scheduler to um, uh, execute the Python scripts and uh, to interact with different APIs of uh, other or third party vendors and um, just giving the dashboards to our users um, to have it in a more useful, interactive format. Okay, and Kristen's gonna talk about something that she did. Okay, uh, one thing that we did um, uh, to try to uh, kind of bring a lot of the data that our end users were using, um, they decided that we wanted to create a one-stop shop for our students to um, get the students help in a quicker fashion and so uh, we are a banner school and so you guys that know banner know there's many forms that you have to go to to look at information for the students so we wanted to bring that together in a more concise view so so what we did is we created this dashboard and we wanted to be FERPA compliant so uh, we do pull in the ID picture of the students so when they come into the one-stop shop uh, the employees can see the student that they're speaking with. They can see that that's the correct student. Uh, we have FERPA information displayed for them. We have curriculum data um, and address information. As you can see, I listed the, um, all the different table, the forms, the banner forms that we're pulling data from on this one form. And so they can quickly look at this one form and see the student, see what level they are, see you know if they've released their FERPA to their parent, if their parent has called in. So just a lot of information. Uh, one thing too, I am a programmer as well. We took um, this to kind of keep it concise on the form. We combined several forms into one uh, multi-column list box. So that was just a little bit of code showing where we pulled comments from three different comment screens in Banner into one uh, multi-column list box so they can see all the comments in one place. Uh, again, this was a tabbed um, dashboard. So on the first tab, we had that general information. The second uh, tab, we have um, account information so they can see their balance. They can see um, memo and deposits so they can see all of this information where as you can see, it's coming from three different banner forms. It's all on this one form. Uh, and then on this third tab, we're pulling in financial aid information. And um, so again, we're pulling information from four different banner forms. We're pulling the budget information, the awards, packaging information. And um, we sat down with our end users and they defined what they wanted to see on each of these forms and how they wanted it organized. And then on the final form of this dashboard, we we're pulling in requirements. Uh, so they could see like, are they enrolled? How many hours? Um, any kind of um, tracking requirements? If there were some that were not satisfied, um, they can see the registration. They can, and they asked for this. Again, we we're combining in the registration, we we're combining uh, not only registered courses, but courses that they earned for that academic 
uh, financial aid period. And so we combined data again to see it in a format that they wanted to see where in Banner they would have had to have gone to two different forms to see that information. So really it just helped speed the process up when students came to the office to um, say, why hasn't my financial aid been awarded? Why do I owe this much money? Um, you know, other questions like that, they were able to use this one uh, dashboard to get that information, you know, the employees and then speak to the students and share, you know, what they needed to do to uh, maybe get their financial aid completed and get that money dispersed to their account. Okay, this next um, project was, um, as I said before, we use a lot of third party um, uh, databases for different functions of the university and what um, our users needed and what we needed too was to be able to um, pull data from Banner and, and these other products into one concise report. Um, this project, we had gone from Moodle, recently gone from Moodle to Canvas <clears throat> and um, we needed to compare what courses were in Banner and what was in Canvas. Um, we needed to be, uh, be able to, the provost needed to be able to view this very quickly and um, wanted to be able to get to the detail information if they were um, needing to get, see something that was out of the ordinary, they needed to be able to drill down and see more detail. So that's what we decided to use was a dashboard that they would have um, and to interact visual of it and also to have that drill down capability. Um, so to get there, we had to uh, look at uh, what the other system offered. Um, do they have a way that we can extract the needed data? Um, do they provide an API so that we can um, uh, get to it? And do they allow a direct connection? Um, we decided to use Canvas's uh, API and to pull that data down into a custom Oracle table and <clears throat> because that allowed for performance to be uh, quicker on the provost uh, side of things. And so we are joining to that table in Argos, we're joining to Banner and the custom table together to make it into one report. And I didn't put in the slide, but I wanted to talk about um, joining and, and, and the SQL, because if you've seen a lot of SQL code, because we are programmers, but there is also a visual design in Argos that makes, makes it easier to uh, click and join. You don't actually have to be experts in SQL to use this product. Um, the, the deeper you get into it, of course, the knowledge is, is beneficial. <clears throat> but um, they do have the um, click and connect and, and so when you see that you see the table from the other uh, system and their data and then you can see the banner tables. But this is what um, we got together so far. This is a in process. So, um, but we're comparing what um, the course load or the courses loaded into banner with what um, is in our test system in Canvas. And then if you clicked on a piece on one of those bars you would get our um, drop down uh, data in there is um, all displayed on one dashboard. So that would load after you clicked on it. And then um, if you clicked on uh, one of those uh, courses, you could drill down to even more data to um, see the, uh, the actual course, who's teaching it, um, whatever the provost, I don't work in the pro student area, but whatever the provost needs to see, that's what is on this report. <laughs> um, and then we have other tools and tricks that we have been using in Argos. Um, it really is versatile. It's so much more than just a spreadsheet or a banded report, which those are great, but there's more things that you can do. And um, it's kind of fun for programmers to get in there and, and, and learn these new things. Um, one thing was the OLAP cube. and. Um, which provides the dynamic reporting and allows, it gives the user the ability to look at data in however way they want to, where you've got your um, variables at the top and on the side and they can, and they can click and drag and see what um, different, how they can, I guess was it dice and splice the information in way they need to see it. And um, so that's very helpful. It gives them the tools to do that without having to say, okay, I need a report by gender. And it goes to IT and they get a flat file of 
the report by gender. And then, oh, well, now we need to know, um, I don't even know what's up there, count by gender, ethnicity. And then we would have to go in and do another one and come back. This gives them the ability to do it themselves. We, we make a data block with all the data in it, and they can pull down and, and look at it different ways. So it reduces their dependency on IT. It reduces IT's workload on these little bitty reporting projects. So it's a win-win for both the functional area and the IT area. Okay, and that's this something similar to what's already been presented. Um, we have our dashboards with the ability to drill down. Um, the graphing um, has improved over the years, and we're so thankful. Um, but you can have all sorts of different graphs. The, the pie charts, the bar graphs, what we're showing right here. You can do your, um, your legend where um, you can display what each color means, and you can um, click on any of that a piece of pie or a bar and then you're going to get a, a another report where it has more information for you so um, you know when when the president or whoever's looking at it and they go oh yeah that's real pretty um, why is this bar this big and this one this big they can click on it right then and there or their assistant can and come back however they are set up to do it and and you can get to more information or if they call about if they call like say financial aid, why is this piece of pie so small? The financial aid functional user can sit there on the telephone and click on it and then she's got that information to go down into it and answer questions quickly. Okay. Okay, one other thing that we do also, we do offer, have a lot of um, scheduled emails that go out from Argos. We use it exclusively at Sanford. Um, this is one that I did recently. Um, they wanted to, we started using banner receiving and they wanted to get an email for when they had not completed receiving. And so instead of the end users getting five emails for all five open POs that they needed to receive, uh, we used SQL code to pull in uh, one row you know, use your SQL skills with your Argos dashboard to then just send them one report, um, one email, and tell them, you know, all the different ones. And so basically, you can get creative and, you know, really, Argos, you're limited only by your imagination. Yeah. In this one, um, there's a, a visible and invisible function. So we, um, we did... Uh, the traffic lights. So green means good, yellow means caution, red means we're in trouble. And um, depending on the data behind it is what, uh, what shows up on the screen. So that gives a really quick um, executive look at it. And that's just a, um, both, both of them are there. It's just depending on the data, which one shows up. And then we had the um, alumni department who wanted to know um, how many donors they had by state. So we have an image of a map, and um, then we have on-click functionality behind each state. And so they click that, and then it displays the information for them. So that gives them a great visual and a, a quick way to see information um, that they need. But um, it's just it's really fun to play with this kind of stuff. 